All right, so the next talk is going to be Michael the Provez 98. Sure. Um, he is going to be talking about Shodan for penetration testers. How many people have actually heard of Shodan or used Shodan? Great, that's perfect. Um, the reason I started putting this pr uh, presentation together is uh, a Killian, who's actually developed this. Um, I talked to him a little bit a couple months ago, and he, he was looking at the queries that people were putting into Shodan, and he was pretty much convinced that people didn't know what they were really looking for. So I, I imagine that a lot of you guys will probably know some of the stuff that's already in here, but uh, just kind of an idea of, of, of some of the uh, capabilities you can use with Shodan. Um, there's a lot more that you can do beyond this, but obviously I have 15 minutes and 59 slides, so I'm going to fly through as much as I can. So this is what I'm going to talk about. What is it? Uh, basic operations. Um, I have two case studies I'm going to show on uh, Cisco devices and then on default passwords, and then I'll talk about uh, some other issues. So it's a computer search engine. Uh, Achillian is the guy who developed it. I actually talked to him about this. So I said, hey, do you mind if I present on, this, on your tool? And he's like, no, go ahead. So that's really cool of him to do that. So it's a search engine, but it's not like Google or Yahoo or Bing. It's, this is a, search, a, a typical search engine looks for data on a website that yeah. indexes it, where, whereas Shodan is a search engine for metadata about a computer. So it's basically a search engine of banners. So it's banner grabbing large swaths of the internet, and that's what you're able to search on. So uh, to know what you're looking for, you really have to know what a banner looks like or what you're looking for in a banner. So having some basic knowledge of what a banner looks like will really help you refine what you're looking for. This is what it looks like, a little difficult to see. Uh, it's just a regular uh, search uh, input. I'll talk about some of the filters that you can use. Uh, initially, there was no login. Now, you don't have to log in, but you can log in with like your Google account or uh, OpenID or some other accounts like that. Gives you some additional functionality, which I'll also talk about. There's also two, uh, two uh, Firefox add-ons. One gives you uh, just like a, opens up a sidebar for you to enter eight queries, and then there's also a drop-down uh, search provider add-on that you can use for the for Shodan. So just enter it into a text box. Uh, you can use quotes like a regular bool uh, to uh, if you want a specific term, and then uh, plus and minus for Boolean operators. Plus is actually uh, is uh, implicit, uh, but if you want to exclude a certain term, obviously just use the minus in front of it. So just like just like pretty much any other search engine. So you can be very general. You want to search for Apache. It's going to find pretty much any device that has Apache in the banner, which is going to be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of boxes. Uh, or you can search for maybe a specific version of a device. Now you can kind of think of where this is getting into, searching for maybe devices that are older, out of date, for example. You can also filter by a number of options. That would be a two-letter country code. So if you're looking for devices in a certain country, uh, if you're looking for, you can also uh, filter by IP or CIDR. So if you have a, a specific range that you're looking at, and then uh, host name and also port. Currently uh, 21, 22, 23, and 80, but uh, he's, ta he's talking about doing some additional ports in the future. So if you want, for example, all Apache servers in Switzerland. So or Apache country uh, colon CH. So whatever the uh, two-letter country code is for whatever country you're looking for. Um, Apache server is running 2.2.3. So just Apache 2.2.3. Um, one of the things if you don't include a country is the top four results for by country will be displayed at the top of the page. Uh, in this result, United States 322,000, Germany 53,000, etc. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of what's available. This is not the whole internet, but there is large portions of the internet that he's uh, already searched. Now, there's also a drop-down box for the country filters. You can actually um, uh, mouse over a country, and it'll tell you how many uh, servers in that country have been surveyed by the uh, box. IP and uh, IP uh, CIDR filtering and country filtering require you to be signed in. So that, that is an important uh, a net filter uh, is, is the IP CIDR, so just net, colon, and then uh, whatever CIDR, uh, if you're looking for a specific one. There's an OS filter if you want to search for certain uh, operating systems. So if you want all Apache servers in the .nist.gov domain, 
or if you want IS 5.0 servers in the EDU domain. Just a couple of brief examples. Uh, you can filter by port, which I already talked about. Just a few very brief things about a showdown. And these are some just rhetorical questions. Um, viewing configuration of a device on the Internet that you don't own but doesn't require any authentication to log into. Well, you're just viewing it. Uh, what about viewing the configuration of a device using a default username and password? What about a unique password? Or what about changing the configuration of any of these devices? I don't know the answers. This is kind of where I put them on the black to white scale. That's kind of viewing a page with no authentication, using a default username and password, using, you know, using a unique password, and then maybe changing the configuration of a device that you don't own. Just threw that little bit of ethics at you there. <laughs> so, just a very quick review of HTTP status codes that we'll be looking at. 200 OK just means request succeeded. 401 unauthorized and 403 forbidden. The difference, of course, between 401 and 403 is 401 is saying, I'm not going to show you this page, but if you provide the pr proper uh, author authorization, you can see it, whereas 403 is basically saying no. Um, so here's the assumptions. If you see a 200 OK, we're going to be able to look at the page with no authentication at all. If you see a 401 and a www authenticate line, it's going to pro require a username and password. And this is probably going to be a pop-up box asking for a username and password. Um, also, some banners advertise defaults, defaults username, default usernames and passwords, so we can use that. So here's a typical 401 unauthorized banner. I know you may not be able to see this, but the top line is just the 401 unauthorized, and then the third line is the www.authenticate. If you went to this IP address, you get a pop-up box, and it would be asking for a username and password. So, uh, yeah, it's a Cisco device, some Cisco device. It doesn't, you don't necessarily know what it is, but you see the server line says Cisco IOS. So here's a 200 OK for a Cisco device. And notice uh, that it also has a, there's, notice there's no www authenticate line, but there's a last modified line. So here's the two side by side. That one has a www authenticate line, which requires us to put in a username and password. And one is a 200 OK, which is allowing us to view the page and doesn't require a password. Um, in fact, if you searched on Shodan for Cisco IOS with these two lines, you would find that these, these are almost uh, 99, almost 100% mutually exclusive. In other words, if it's got last modified in it, chances are it doesn't require any authentication at all. So here's our search results. If you just search for Cisco, 147,000 devices. Cisco IOS, 144,000. Uh, www authenticate, 140,000. Last modified, 3,100. Last modified and www authenticate, 6. So what does this tell us? There's probably about 3,000 Cisco devices that Cisco, that that uh, Shodan has already um, looked at that don't require any authentication at all. So what do these things look like? Well, you've, if you guys, have, this is the old Cisco web interface, where the uh, HTML interface, where the numbers give you a, a level. So surely, you know, it's not going to let me click on level 15 and give me level 15 access to the device. Or maybe it will. <laughs> That's my round. Um, so surely, it, well, maybe it won't let me do execute commit. Yeah, it will. Um, show running conf Yeah. Show CDP neighbors. Yeah. By the way, uh, I know you can't see this, but this is CN-CNC, so that's like China Netcom. We're talking like infrastructure routers here, or switches. You know, they're not all switch switches or routers, but they're, you know, big Cisco devices. This is a Cisco Net Aeronet access point. Uh, this is the main page, the setup page, the security page, the network interface page, the sec enough, more security, all, all of which have, requires no authentication, so we can pretty much change anything we want. This is a... Uh, uh, Cisco Catalyst 2960 Series Device Manager switch configuration. This is the dashboard. Here's the, the ports. Want to turn off a port? So, and, and it's great how people sometimes very accurately label their switches for different floors of a building or the address of the building. And wow, I mean, 
Thank you.